So I'm going to go to our databases. Let me show you uh, my search. If I start at LibGuides, and I'm going to use the Film Criticism site, and go to the databases. And I'm going to begin with Student Resources and Context. They have a lot of good film journals. And in their search bar, I'm just going to write in the director's name. Let's just see what comes up. You can see there's a lot of information, uh, reference, images, news, magazines. And because I want uh, scholarly articles, I'm going to click on Academic Journals Only. And look through. Off to the right, you'll see what type of article it is, whether it's a critical essay, a movie review, a book review, bibliography. Again, I'm looking for critical essays. And so here's one about history that might be helpful. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search this for Tarantino. And he only appears once in this article. And so I have a feeling this isn't going to be very helpful for me, um, even though it's on this sort of topic. Um, I don't really see it focusing on film or his work. Um, and so I don't think this is going to be helpful. So I'm going to go back to my search results and keep looking. And basically what you're looking at is just the titles, looking for things that are interesting to you, um, that, you know, answer your question. Here's an interesting um, article. It doesn't really have to do with my question, but I'm kind of interested in it as a topic, which is um, the sort of you know narrative strategy that Tarantino uses in his storytelling, which tends to be nonlinear rather than linear. And I can see I've got 33 matches, which means Tarantino is mentioned 33 times in this article. So he's going to be more of a focus here and scanning through it. I can see that it deals more with films uh, rather than other types of media. So I think this is going to be helpful for me. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab the citation now before I forget. So I click on citation, download it, open it up, copy the citation, and then paste it into a works cited page. I always do this just so that I can keep track of these um, as I'm going so that I don't have to go back and try to find them later. And the nice thing about Gale is it formats it MLA for you. Um, I'm also going to download the article as a PDF so I can read it later and not have to be online to read it. There's another thing that I think is interesting about um, Gale is I can look at narr related subjects. So if I am interested in sort of the broader idea of narrative art, I can click on that and then I can click on academic journals and search within these 22 for film, you know, articles on film only. And that'll give me this, these articles that, um, and this one looks interesting, about film in general. So this is a broader discussion than just on Tarantino. Uh, but it looks interesting and worthwhile. And I can see Tarantino's mentioned in it once, but um, I can see, you know, it's, it's not as important for me to have Tarantino in this one uh, since it's talking about this uh, cinema in general, and I'm going to need that broader perspective somewhere, sometime in my paper. Um, I'm going to bookmark this in my Digo account so that I can get back to it easily. And I'll put the tag non-narrative film, save the bookmark, and then it'll be in my Digo account later so I can take a look at it. But now I'm starting to see a sort of different question emerge from my reading, which is, how do Tarantino's nonlinear plots shape our understanding of his work? That's sort of interesting when you think about Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction. They're nonlinear storylines, and uh, have you know how does that affect our understanding of the characters, of the themes uh, that he's exploring there? So with that question, I'm going to go down to JSTOR this time, and. Uh, since Pulp Fiction is a non-narrative film, I'm going to search Quentin Tarantino and Pulp Fiction this time and see what I get. It's going to be a little bit more narrow. I can see I've got some good results here. JSTOR is more academic articles, um, but I'm going to look in journals to see what I can find. And kind of scroll down here. And here looks, looks one, Rewriting the Hollywood Formula. Um, this looks like it's talking about structure, story structure. And since that's what I'm looking for, um, I'm going to click on that. And I apologize for it being cut off at the left there. But what you can see is I get a, um, a, you know, a, um, 
HTML of the story, of the article. Um, and I can look around and kind of do a quick scan of it, uh, check if there's an abstract, which there isn't in this case. And it looks, it looks good to me, so I'm going to grab the PDF of this as well. I can also view the citation, and if I think I'm going to use it, I'm going to copy that, paste it onto my work cited page. and then grab the PDF of it. I'll have to agree to JSTOR's term and conditions, which is okay, and it'll download the PDF for me. So one thing I'm noticing in some of the articles is that it's not just Tarantino that's playing around with this non-narrative, you know, linear structure of storytelling. Um, there's a lot of other directors who are playing with it, Christopher Nolan, um, among others. And so I'm wondering if like if a broader question about this kind of storytelling uh, is emerging now, if this is a trend, uh, and if it is a trend, why is it happening now? Um, so I'm going to look around for that information using the Mountain View Public Library database, and you all have your library card now. EBSCOhost is what I recommend using the most for this. You'll type in your library card number here. And EBSCOhost has a great database. Uh, you have to scroll down to click on it, uh, but it's Film and Television Literature Index with full text. So click on that, hit continue, and then to search like you do with Google. This time I'm going to put in Narrative Film and Quentin Tarantino. And EBSCOhost has great for academic art journal articles. Um, I'm going to look through here. If I just want academic journals, I can click on that and it'll limit the hits I get. Gives me a short summary of what the article is about. This looks like an interesting article related to Reservoir Dogs um, instead of Pulp Fiction. And the narrative uh, style, that's another non-linear narrative film. I can search for Tarantino's name in here and see that it's 17 matches, which means he's discussed fairly frequently in this. I can kind of go through and look at all those places where he's talked about. And it looks good, so I think I'm going to keep this one too. What I'm going to do is put this in my Digo account bookmark it this time I'll tag it as the title of the um, film uh, not Pulp Fiction but Reservoir Dogs so I can keep track of you know my the different types of articles and another nice thing on Digo which you saw through the tutorial is that if there's anything I want to highlight um, this is kind of like online note-taking if this is a especially good uh, paragraph, I can highlight it. Um, and then when I go to my Digo library, I'll see that highlight right there. And so I've got all my sources here for my search. Um, and anything I highlight shows up here. And if I want to get back to another article, I can click right here and get to that article. EBSCOhost also makes it very easy to cite, so you can take the MLA citation, I'm still in the highlighter here, um, copy and paste, so that I can keep track of these sources. And then keep searching. So now I have this sort of question about maybe the genre that Tarantino is working in influences his storytelling style. Those non-narrative films are, you know, focused on certain kinds of genres like Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, where his more recent films 
uh, which are in very different genres, are more narrative, linear style. And so there might be an influence on the genre dictating the storytelling style that I might want to explore. Um, but you can see how my thinking has changed from like how I started off to where I am now. I began by just thinking a very simplistic question you know, about whether or not Quentin Tarantino's films are fair to history. And um, I moved from the reading to a more interesting area, at least for me, uh, thinking about how he structures his narratives in his films and what sort of choices he makes there using either linear storytelling or nonlinear storytelling. And that actually has more applicability to me as a filmmaker. When I go to make my film, um, I can choose a nonlinear narrative for my film and sort of use what I learned about from this research uh, to structure uh, my own film. So it could be more helpful for me that way than the question on history. So if you have any questions, please contact me um, either in the library or through the Senior Project Help uh, button on the library website, and I'd be happy to help you with any part of the research process you go through. Thank you.